I'm going to talk today about the women's ministry, so I need everybody to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Imagine the church filled with women, yes children, but mostly women. Women whose parents did not survive to see their 50th birthdays. Women whose husbands and sons died while fighting in the war. Women who watched their loved ones die on the side of the road with no funeral, no means to carry away the body, but the dogs would come to take care of them. You can open your eyes. Women with stories of violence that I, I can only imagine. Um, stories of gunfire they heard all night long. Um, they would be down on their kitchen floor asking God just to get them through the night. Uh, women like my friend Rashida, a midwife that delivers 40 babies a month to an already overpopulated capital city of Monrovia. Uh, she teaches 50 children every week for Sunday school on little benches with no visual aids, but we were able to leave some. But no, no primer for a children's church, nothing. While we were there, um, she underwent a cataract eye surgery, not at a hospital. She had to go on board a ship called the Mercy Ship, where it stays in port for a couple days in case you have complications. Women's lives are very hard. There was not very much time to fellowship, and they apologized for that. But you know what? The whole time I was there, I never heard one complaint. Never. Um, there is no consistent electricity, lots of generators. Um, there is sometimes on, sometimes off, or switching over. No post office, right? I was looking for postcards, no postcards. Um, so that would be kind of hard to have women support, like calling your mother to ask something about the baby's doing. They have cell phones, though. Um, no washers, no dryers, hand washing and beautiful handmade clothing. Um, I even had a pair of shoes made for me while I was there. Everything is handmade and exquisite. The faith in God is strong. It really put me to shame, but it increased my faith tremendously. Um, many, many women I met there, um, I just was amazed by their power and humbleness and grace. I shared a hotel room with Dawn, Debbie, and Jennifer, all four of us. It was awesome, <laughs> yes. And I, I saw Dawn grow in the Lord while we were there. She excelled with the children, and they would come up to us and pinch our skin to see if we were real, or see some thought maybe we were angels, they weren't sure. Um, I saw Jennifer's outgoing personality be a very fast icebreaker for a short missions trip. Praise the Lord. Um, I saw uh, Debbie uh, constantly uh, remind herself she's stepping out of her comfort zone and uh, realizing uh, God's plan for her in missions and always trusting God to see her through. One of the missionaries from Compassion Corps, Beth McMillan, she doesn't uh, say much, but she plans everything behind the scenes, every possibility of things that could happen. And Jan Bean, um, also with Compassion Corps, um, very humble, especially in her acceptance of the new uh, Sunday School Building naming, and always having a word to say when put on the spot for a speech. I learned a lot from her. The women from Okeola and Church of Christian Compassion, Stacy. Terry Tennant and Terry Day um, brought the message of Christ no matter what color our skin or if we live in Africa or America, we're all in the same boat. Finally, for myself, feeling the Holy Spirit's urging at the Ministry of Education where the plea came for more teachers, more school supplies. Uh, all that is required is a high school diploma uh, a 10 week course called a CSER. So um, I urge you, if someone here, if God is calling you um, to the mission field, wherever it is, uh, please, uh, in the words of Pittman, don't be shy. Um, if I can do it with my uh, lack of confidence, my lack of ability, uh, anybody can do it. 
I thank my financial and prayer supporters for sending me on this trip. Thank you.